Now on to its philosophy and methods. There is no peace. There is only time wasted between battles. From Ergathon of the Skull Takers, a champion of Kor. The fundamental conflicts that drive mortal life forward sustain corn on a base level, much as bread and water might sustain a creature of flesh. But just as a mortal body craves more substantial food, so too does corn desire greater conflicts. It is not content to lurk in the background inciting petty squabbles or drinking in the joys of a remote border dispute. Corn is not some mere beast or other lowly temporal being. It is a god, and the appetite of a god is terrible and insatiable. Its worship takes many forms. Primitive human cultures have followed it since the time they first were able to hunt game and make war upon their neighbors. Many of them are not even aware that the god they venerate is the blood god itself. Some do not even think of it as a god. To them it is a force of nature to be appeased, or a spirit to be persuaded. A common representation of corn in these cultures is that of a great beast, such as a shadowy mastiff, eyes ablaze as it seeks its prey. Enlisting the aid of such a spirit can ensure a productive hunt or bloody victory in a battle with another clan. Humans are not alone in following this blood-soaked path. Korn's favor can also come to the brutal orcs, despite their own gods Gork and Morg. Fierce Neculi mercenaries, bloodthirsty Rak Gol hunters, or indeed any warrior from any intelligent species can serve the purpose of the Lord of Skulls. They need only pledge blood and skulls to their master to receive his strength in their arms and his rage in their hearts. Even deep within Imperial space, there are those who would unwittingly turn to the worship of corn. On Hive Worlds, gangs fight one another for territory and supplies. Sometimes they recruit a deadly assassin to eliminate a particularly powerful opposing gang leader. Such an assassin, at the direction of their temple's leadership, may seek a divine hand to guide their dagger's stroke over the throat of their target. In praying for help to commit such a murder, the assassin runs the risk of attracting the notice of Kor the Lord of Murder. The assassin's masters may or may not know that their servants end up serving it in turn. They may think that they are offering sacrifices to some other deity, or could simply not care to whom the blood of the kill is consecrated as long as the temple gains power and influence. Regardless, Korn offers its help and claims the blood in payment. Regardless of the need that pushes someone to it, no matter the circumstance or indeed even the name or form by which it is known, one constant binds all to corn, blood. Above all, it seeks the spilling of blood through murder, slaughter and war. Servants of the Blood God rip apart the flesh of their enemies, staining the soil on thousands of worlds with crimson gore, all in the name of Korn. Nothing pleases it more than the free flow of sanguine life force. It gives the God its power, sustains it, and eases the spreading of its influence. 
Those who worship corn must ensure that the supply of blood never ceases. For corn cares not from where the blood flows, only that it does. A follower who displeases it by failing to provide sufficient blood sacrifices will likely find themselves as the next offering, their blood drunk, their soul consumed, and their skull tossed upon the vast mountain of such bones that surrounds the throne of skulls. Though Korn's influence is a steady, constant tide of aggression, pushing the world of mortals to acts of brutality, murder and bloodshed, this is not enough to satiate the thirst of the Lord of Battle. Minor, isolated or subtle acts cannot keep the rivers of its realm flowing with blood or elevate his throne ever higher upon a mound of skulls. They cannot fuel the fires of the boundless rage that exists at the very core of its being. It demands slaughter on a planetary scale, the murder of entire species, and most of all, unending battle. Warfare, constant, epic, and merciless war is required to reap the blood and skulls required to feed the cravings of a god. All intelligent species wage war upon their rivals, even those that claim to seek unity and enlightenment, those that do not willingly submit to the cause of another's greater good, are brought to heal through armed force. For reluctant soldiers, war is a duty performed in service to a higher cause. It serves its purpose as a means to an end of peace. Many, though, find the means of carnage to become an end in itself. To those who serve corn, war needs no justification or purpose beyond the glorious act itself. Splitting a head with a chain axe and feeling the blood strike the flesh of the hand that wields it is its own reward. It becomes a compulsion. Killing begets killing, blood demands blood, devotion to corn is a life, no matter how brief or long, filled with days of brutal destruction, broken up only by the need to gather strength until the assault can be launched anew. A single, rage-fueled man can kill a handful of people before he falls, but when hundreds or Thousands of such individuals gather together. Cities, planets, and even galaxies shake in fear. Armies of Korn's devoted worshippers descend upon a planet with a single purpose, to reap skulls and spill blood for their master. Huge demon engines of war, weapons of incalculable destructive power, are granted to the armies that show the greatest devotion and total the largest body counts. As the doom mortars of these chosen forces rain, grave digger shells down upon the heads of a terrified populace, ranks of frenzied warriors tear into a planet as if it were itself a living thing. Orbital defenses are smashed, Cities are raised, and enemy war machines are obliterated, clearing the way for the killing to begin in earnest. Destruction inflicted from ranged weapons is a start, but true martial achievement can only be realized in close quarters. Each kill committed fuels a greater slaughter. There are no captives taken, no lives spared, corn does not abide mercy. As streets become rivers of blood and bones shatter beneath advancing boots, the armies of corn push themselves to greater and greater feats of carnage. At first, 
pistols are holstered in favor of chainsaws and power axes. The blades bite deeply into the chests and necks of terrified enemy soldiers. The resistance of the flesh generating a feeling of grim satisfaction for the wielder. Soon, even this sensation is not gratifying enough. The warriors of Khorne need to feel the heat of freshly spilled blood as it pumps out of hearts directly onto their skin. They need to revel in the snapping of arms and ripping of flesh for the jagged bone protrusions cause. In these moments, Khorne and its followers reach a level of communion that gives the blood god the closest thing it gets to a feeling of being satiated. This feeling, however, is fleeting. As soon as it subsides, Khorn bellows in rage and pushes its followers to regroup and prepare to assault their next target. The warfare and the killing never ends. Even in Khorn's own realm, the Blood God's domain, where enemies only rarely present themselves, there is war. The generals of Khorne's blood legions, the mighty bloodthirsters, lead legions of bloodletters, flesh hounds, and other demons into battle against one another. They hone their brutal skills, even as they dull their blades edges against the armor of other demons. Axes cut into unnatural flesh in a constant orgy of destruction. Limbs are severed, chests are impaled on horns, faces are ripped apart by teeth and claws. When a battle ends, the wrecked bodies of the fallen are crushed underfoot or tossed into great bottomless chasms. The battlefield remains idle for only as long as it takes for fresh legions to mass. Then, the battle cries are heard once more, and war begins anew. The only respite from the conflict is reserved for the Furnace Demons, who work the forges, creating weapons for the Blood Legions to wield in their next battle, be it within Khorne's realm or in the material world. The Cult of Khorne Prepare the dread claws and unchain the mad ones. Glorious battle awaits us today, for the world below has refused to surrender. Let us descend upon them with fury and rage, giving no quarter and sparing only those warriors who fight well enough to earn a place amongst us. As to the rest, their lives and possessions are ours, but their skulls are for corn. From Captain Corgin, also known as the World Reaver. Corn is the Blood God, an angry and murderous god of chaos whose bellows of limitless rage echo throughout the corridors of time and space. Its great brass throne sits in the realm of chaos, upon a mountain of skulls in the midst of a plain of splintered bone and lakes of mortal blood, formed from the remains of its followers slain in battle and those who its minions have killed in its name. Corn embodies mindless and absolute violence, destroying everyone and everything within reach shedding the blood of friend and foe alike simply for the sake and joy of murder and unleashing rage. The followers of Khorne are always ferocious warriors and never make use of psychic powers, for the blood god abhors the trickery of magic and cowardly sorcerers, particularly the servants of Zeech. Men and women turn to Khorne for the power to conquer, to defeat their enemies in battle, to wreak bloody vengeance, and to attain unmatched martial prowess against all comers. The most fanatical and dedicated of the god's followers, those whose souls are trapped fully within his bloody embrace, 
Know that the blood god truly desires a only constant and wild slaughter for its own sake. It cares not from where the blood flows, only that it flows without cease for all eternity. Corn has an immense following among mortals, especially humans, as its radiance of raw power and strong emotion beckons all who lust for battle and power over their fellows to his side. Worship of Corn is especially embraced by the more primitive and primal human tribes that inhibit many of the feral and feudal worlds across the Imperium of Man. The Blood God's followers are almost all uncontrollable fighters who excel at the art of killing. Cornered cultists share their God's straightforward philosophy on warfare and battle tactics, preferring to charge directly at their foes in order to defeat them in close, melee combat where they can make the blood really flow. As such, the followers are generally berserkers that pay little heed to tactics or defense in their frenzy for blood. Korn deeply frowns upon the use of sorcery and trickery, and those pursuing the magical arts look elsewhere, perhaps to Zeej, to find a patron for their studies. Unlike the other Chaos Gods, Korn's followers do not go to great lengths to build temples in his honor. Instead, they worship their god on the battlefield, praising it with battle cries such as Blood for the Blood God or Skulls for the Skull Throne. The god's followers also offer him praise and attempt to win his favor by savagely attacking each other when there are no other battles to be fought, sometimes even when there are. It is said that Korn is the easiest Chaos God to worship, because while worship of most of the other gods requires rituals, altars, and sacrifices, Korn's demands are simply that its followers spill fresh blood and collect skulls in its name. Those favored by it often receive its Chaos blessings, mutations, Sometimes these physical alterations take the form of great strength or a beast-like visage, sometimes of frightening physical alterations such as the development of horns, claws, or rending talons. Regardless of the mutations that develop, they are displayed proudly by their cornered recipients and serve both as visible reminders of the Blood God's existence and as inspiration for those who have not yet won his favor. The World Eater's Traitor Legion is dedicated solely to Korn and his cause, the shedding of blood and the defeat of all enemies. Cornered Corruption the worship of Korn appeals primarily to warriors, soldiers, other individuals in military occupations, and anyone who feels weak and powerless and wishes they had the physical power to exert their will or take what they wanted. For these individuals, the Blood God provides enhanced strength, vitality, and prowess in combat, particularly physical and melee combat. However, the more an individual gives of their soul to Korn and becomes further corrupted by its brand of chaos, the more they are consumed by increasingly uncontrollable feelings of bloodlust, anger, and wrath that can only be sated for a few moments by taking a life. Whilst Cornered's revel in the sense of power granted them by this bloodlust and the mutational gifts that Korn may provide to enhance their combat prowess, this bloodlust is increasingly uncontrollable and requires them to engage in the most heinous forms of violence to maintain even a semblance of control. Even the momentary relief from the bloodlust that killing provides eventually fades 
and long-term cornets ultimately transform into screaming monsters of adrenaline and aggression who will do anything to slaughter and kill other living beings until their reason has long since been subverted by a mindless thirst for murder, violence, and savagery. Most cornets eventually become berserkers of one kind or another, and favor melee weapons, particularly axes, over ranged weaponry, since blades provide a far more visceral experience in combat than firearms or directed energy weapons. Cornets disdain any use of psychic powers or psychic sorcery as dishonorable and the epitome of physical weakness preferring to do their killing up close and personal. The problem with cornered battle tactics is that they essentially have none. They rely on their sheer ferocity and melee combat prowess to keep them alive long enough to reach their foes and tear them apart. And they usually do. Ultimately, a cornet's only overriding concern is to spill more blood and take more lives for the blood god. They will quite happily sacrifice their own lives to feed their savage god's eternal appetite for slaughter, as corn cares little about whose lives it ultimately claims, so long as the blood continues to flow. And now, onto its relationship with its siblings. In the great game of the Chaos Gods, Korn hates and despises Selanesh, the Prince of Pleasure, above all other beings in the galaxy. The self-indulgent sensuality of the Prince of Chaos is an affront to the warrior instincts of Korn. The Lord of Battle dreams of one day wrapping its scarlet fingers around Slanesh's soft, delicate neck and crushing it until the younger gods' depraved screams of pleasure become shrieks of agony and then, finally, go silent with a satisfying snapping of godly bone. The sense of duty, honor, self-sacrifice that fuels part of Korn's existence is an anathema to the followers of Slanesh, and the very antithesis of their own philosophy of self-indulgent pleasure-seeking. The demonic servants of Korn and Slanesh often attack each other on sight, and their mortal followers are often no less eager to join battle. However, Korn also has little respect for Zeej, the Arch Conspirator. Korn is enraged by the constant machinations of his brother god, the architect of fate's patronage of sorcerers and ambitious, scheming manipulators who strike from the shadows. Instead of in open battle, intensifies the antipathy between it and Zeej's respective followers, and they are frequently in conflict. However, both of them make common cause when the prospect for bloodletting is great, and Zinch's unguessable schemes can be advanced through their mutual efforts. At such times, the Star of Chaos waxes strong in the mortal realm, as the two most potent of the Ruiner's powers temporarily join forces and send their demonic legions to war. Such mercurial pact seldom endure for long, before Korn's berserk disciples or Zinch's manipulators inevitably turn on their erstwhile allies.